everybody, this is Dr. Anna, and I'm here to show you the minerals you'll have to know. Uh, so number one, your number one mineral is quartz right here. This is a quartz crystal. And uh, when you see these smooth, shiny surfaces with the six side, and it will scratch the glass if you try it. and it scratches it and you turn it to the broken side and there is no cleavage and this is quartz. Number two, this is your common quartz. I call it common quartz because that's how you find the quartz everywhere around here. So that's the common quartz. Number two, it doesn't have any cleavage so no flat shiny surfaces and it scratches the glass. Right there. Remember the, the quartz, this common quartz can have different colors. It could be blue, it could be sometimes even pink, or it could be gray, depending on what uh, coloring agent, what kind of element is making the colors on it. So that's common quartz or quartz. This here is number three, that's the chert. The chert also can have different colors, black, red, uh, orange, yellow. Uh, the main and most important thing about it that it doesn't have any cleavage. It has this typical conchoidal fracture right there, conchoidal fracture. And it's also very hard, so it will scratch the glass. So no cleavage, conchoidal fracture, scratches the glass, can have any color. That's chert. This is number four. This is the orthoclase feldspar or K-feldspar. Uh, the most important thing about the K-feldspar is the color. Usually these are uh, pink and from pink to light darker brown. It could be any color, but it's very characteristic. And um, it has two ways of cleavage. If you see the shiny surface, this is one way because it's parallel with this side. So this side and this side. If I turn it on, it uh, shines at the same time, parallel. So that's two ways. One, two, no cleavage on this side. So with the k bar, I use the color, the cleavage, and you can also scratch it on the glass. So the hardness is six right there. It's six on the hardness scale. So that's k bar or orthoclase. Number five is the calcium plagioclase. This calcium plagioclase is not a single crystal like your orthoclase was. Uh, so it's a bunch of uh, calcium plagioclase put together. The other name for this is anorthite. Uh, so you can see that it cleaves. It does have two ways of cleavage if, if you you could see it if it was a single crystal, but this is not, so it's hard to see. All you can see is that it has cleavage planes, like right there, there is one. And if you turn around, there is a lot of them in there. So it's always gray, and it scratches the glass right there. So this is calcium plagioclase, or anorthite. This is number six. This is the albite or sodium plagioclase. One of the really characteristic uh, important feature of this that it has this so-called striation. Probably you can see these low lines right here, which are actually twin places, twin planes between crystals. This, this albite or sodium plagioclase is very characteristically twin. It makes a lot of um, twins next to each other and the lines of striation is the, the twin planes. Uh, other than that, it has also two cleavages. You can see this one right here parallel, and you can see it on this side. It's also uh, parallel, and there is no cleavage on that side. So it has two ways of cleavage. It has the striation. Usually it's uh, white, and it will scratch the glass. It's six on the hardness scale, so it's right there. Uh, so this is uh, albite or sodium plagioclase. This is number seven. 
This is olivine. It's always green. It doesn't have a cleavage, so it's very irregular. And it is also scratches the glass at six, so it scratches the glass right there. So olivine. I use that it's green, that it scratches the glass, and it doesn't have cleavage. Number eight is the pyroxene. Pyroxene has cleavage. It's not perfect, though, but you can see the whole side shines at the same time. And the other one, the other cleavage plane is right here. It's not flat, but it shines at the same time. So it's not so good cleavage, but it is cleavage, none of the less. And they are 90 degrees away from each other, and the mineral itself is green. Also, it scratches the glass. It sticks on the hardness. So this is kind of grayish green, has two ways of cleavage, scratches the glass. This is pyroxene. This one is number nine. It's amphibore. It's a beautiful, shiny black mineral with two good cleavage, I mean two cleavages. One is right here. You can see that the whole side shines at the same time. This is the other. The whole side shines at the same time, right here. And uh, these cleavage planes are 120 degree to each other. So that is 120 degree right there. So that's amphibole. Oh, it also scratches the glass. It's six on the hardness scale. So right there, it scratches it. Number 10. This here is a biotite mica. The biotite mica uh, is soft. You can scratch it with your fingernail. It's about two on, on the hardness scale. And it has one way of perfect cleavage and no cleavage on the other side. So that's biotite. And it it also have like a strip, so it's right here, it's brownish. So that's biotite. Next one is also mica. This is the mica group biotite, and this one is the muscovite. The musco muscovite is the uh, mica where you can see through, transparent, and uh, everything else is the same as with the biotite. So you can scratch it with your fingernail and uh, it has one way of perfect cleavage, but no cleavage on the other side. So it's one way of perfect cleavage, muscovite. The 12 is uh, kaolinite, it's a clay mineral. It is also sheet silicate, and if you put some water on it, one, one of the most important characteristics is that the water gets absorbed really quickly. So as soon as you put it uh, put the water on it, it goes away, it goes into it, sucks up the water. That's why we can use it for calpactate, because it absorbs the water really quick. Uh, it has good uh, streak on the black plate, white, and actually it paints your hand, and it's earthy, very soft. You can scratch it with your fingernail easily. So that's kaolinite. 13 is talc. This is also a very soft mineral. You can scratch it with your fingernail. Uh, the property I would use with the talc is the, the fact that it's very soft and that it makes a white streak right there. So that's talc. Talc. Sometimes the talc can be green, like this one right here. And uh, the reason that it's green, because it um, forms together with chloride, which is a cream, cle uh, green mineral, and so this is really soft. You can scratch it, and when it's chloride and talc together, we call it soapstone. And the sculptors love to use it because it's really warm and soft and easy to sculpt. So that's talc. Number 14 is the garnet, and as you turn it around, you can see that it doesn't have any cleavage. It's reddish brown, and it's, it scratches the glass. So it's very sharp, scratches the glass, we call it garnet.
and it's reddish usually. Number 15 is calcite. And when we put hydrochloric acid on the calcite, you cannot miss it with anything else because it starts effervescing really quickly. Right there. See the bubbles forming? So remember the hydrochloric acid calcite makes calcium chloride plus CO2. CO2 is the one which bubbles. On the other hand, it has three ways of cleavage by the rhombohedra. And uh, you can scratch it with the copper penny. So it has the hardness of three. It's on the hardness scale. You cannot scratch it with your fingernail. So ca that's calcite. 16 is the dolomite. And dolomite is calcium magnesium carbonate. If you scratch it with the nail, then it will start... Um, fizzing right there a little bit, just a little bit, but it does just a little bit. So that's how you can separate it from the calcite, um, and you know that it's dolomite because it's fizzing some. But other than that, it also have three ways of cleavage, not as good as in case of the calcite, but uh, three ways of cleavage, it fizzes a little bit with the hydrochloric acid, so that's dolomite. Number 17 is the gypsum. Gypsum you can scratch with your fingernail. It's number two on the hardness scale. And it has cleavage. And it makes a streak right there on the plane. But the most important thing about the gypsum is that it, you can scratch it with your fingernail. It's similar to the calcite. Remember, calcite is fizzing. It's similar to the next one, which is the salt, which tastes salty, so you cannot mix it with that either. So this is gypsum. Gypsum sometimes can be fibrous, like this one, but still you will be able to scratch it with your fingernail, so you know that's what it is. Gypsum. Number eight, 18, sorry, is the halite, which is the, your salt. So it tastes salty. It has three ways of cleavage by the cube. And um, it's about three, so you can scratch it with the copper penny, but definitely not with your fingernail. So this is the, the halide, the salt. You shouldn't mix it with anything because when you hold it, the moisture on your hand starts dissolving it, so your hand becomes a bit slimy. So that's halide. 19 is the fluoride. It has good cleavage. It has four ways of cleavage, which it's hard to, to reproduce because you have to cleave it by the octahedra. But when you break it, you see that it has very shiny flat surfaces. The ones I gave you are purple, but the fluorite actually is um, exotic coloration, so it can have a lot of different colors. It will be scratched by the, the nail, so you know it's about four on the hardness scale, so you cannot mix it with the quartz or the amethyst, because the quartz will scratch the glass, but the fluorite will never do that. So that's fluorite. Number 20 is the magnetite, and you can never mix magnetite with anything, because if you have a magnet around, you just put it on, and it's going to stick to it, so nothing else will do that but the magnetite. Also, the magnetite will have a great streak right there. So you cannot, and it's metallic, you cannot really mix it with anything. Magnetite, that's your 20. 21 is the hematite. I have two kinds, the, the black and the red. Both of them, though, has brown streak. This is dark brown streak, but brown, none of the last. And this one is reddish brown. So that's hematite. This is metallic, this is earthy, but very characteristically, this is how the hematite looks like. Probably the only thing which they are similar to is the garnet, but the garnet will scratch the glass while these guys won't.
22 is the Galena. Galena is the ladder, so it's very, very heavy, very dense. Breaks by the cube, so it has one, two, three ways of cleavage. Very strong metallic luster, and it will have a gray streak right there. So that's Galena, very heavy. Cleave spider cube, metallic luster, and the gray streak. 23 is the fool's gold or the pyrite. Really, it's the pyrite. As you can see, it has no cleavage. Very irregular. Looks like gold, but it's not gold. That's why they call it fool's gold. The way you separate it from the gold is that when you streak the pyrite, it's going to have a gray streak. The gold will have a yellow streak. So if you think you found gold, just pick up a little porcelain plate and you will see if it's yellow or gray. If it's gray, you just found pyrite. So this is pyrite, a fool's gold. The next one, which is 24, is the graphite. Graphite? Graphite is uh, very soft. You can scratch it with your fingernail right there. And it will leave a very good streak. So if, if I had to recognize graphite, this is what I would use. It's very soft. It paints your hand, has a good streak, and it's really soft. Graphite. And the very last mineral, you cannot mix it with anything else because... It's very typically piezolytic. It's the bauxite. It doesn't have any cleavage. It's reddish brown, and it won't scratch the glass. It's about 5.5. But just this piezolytic structure is very characteristic. Nothing else looks like that. So it's easy to recognize. OK, folks, this is the minerals you'll have to know. And I will see you in class. Bye.